here's your wrestling news for August 1st, 2021. And your headlines for today include multiple reasons for Bray Wyatt's WWE release are out. Wrestling World strongly reacts. Mental Health, Vince McMahon, Alexa Bliss, and others are blamed for Wyatt's release. Mickey James drops a scathing tweet about WWE giving Bray Wyatt's gimmick to someone else. Released WWE Superstar makes Impact Wrestling debut. Current WWE wrestler was backstage at AEW Dynamite this week. Is WWE making efforts to get Paige back in the ring? WWE plans a Punjabi prison match soon, and more. We're starting off with Bray Wyatt, who was released yesterday by WWE, bringing his 12-year run with the company to an abrupt end. On social media, fans have been shocked by WWE's decision to release the massively popular Fiend, and it's not just the crowd who have had something to say. On Twitter, Renee Paquette said her mind was blown by Bray's release, but is excited to see him thrive wherever he goes next. Chelsea Green shared a photo of herself from her time as Laurel Van Ness, looking particularly crazy, saying she's waiting for Wyatt to come to the dark side. Former WWE star Ryback called Wyatt one of the most talented and creative guys in the business, and Mick Foley said how WWE is losing a true visionary and innovator in wrestling and hopes Bray finds happiness once again in wrestling and in life. One reaction fans were interested in is Alexa Bliss, whose current creepy gimmick stems from The Fiend, and on Twitter, she was at a loss for words, saying, I really am at a loss for words. Thank you so much, Wyndham, for everything you've done for this company. The most fun I've had is working with you. Such an amazing talent and the most kind person. I'm just in shock. Mickey James, who knows all about being released, was far harsher with WWE, as she didn't appreciate how news of Wyatt's departure was broke. Like almost all releases, Wyatt was wished well in his future endeavors, and in response, James wrote, I think what you meant to say was, thank you so much for coming up with such an incredible gimmick time and time again, one so cool and over we really didn't know how to book it right, so we just gave it to someone else so we can still make all the money off of it and let you go. It's no secret that The Fiend was able to get over with fans, despite some shaky booking by WWE themselves. After all, Wyatt's first Universal title reign ended at the hands of Goldberg, but that didn't derail the fans' love for the character, nor did his second reign ending after just one week at the hands of Roman Reigns. With how popular Bray was, it's no wonder that fans are struggling to come to terms with his departure, and sadly, a small portion of fans are blaming Alexa Bliss for this release. In the comments of her tweet where she reacted to Bray's release, fans sent a ton of hate-filled comments that we won't be sharing here. The gist of these comments was that Bliss was to blame for Wyatt being released, as she stole his gimmick, even though Bliss was given the gimmick by WWE's creative team, and the former women's champion doesn't get to decide who's hired or fired. These hateful comments took a toll on the Raw superstar, who set her account to private so only her existing followers can see her tweets. Hopefully, fans will think twice the next time they lash out at her, as though Bray's departure is sad news, it wasn't caused in any way by Alexa Bliss. With Bray gone, the entire Wyatt family has now been released from WWE, and on social media, Braun Strowman said he's waiting alongside a picture of himself and Bray. Arguably the two biggest releases of 2021, a Braun and Bray reunion would be huge for any company they sign with, though we'll have to wait until both men are free from WWE's non-compete clause. Wyatt was a huge part of WWE, and several current superstars have commented on his release too, but wrestlers lower on the card should be careful. After all, we've seen that WWE won't hesitate to cut one of their most popular stars, and the last thing someone who isn't being used on TV needs is to inadvertently bash the company, giving WWE another reason to fire them any day. Within minutes of Wyatt's release being made public, fans speculated he'll be heading to AEW, possibly as part of the Dark Order. On Twitter, Evil Uno said that he should join Dark Order is a new chant for fans, but specified that the group doesn't have an official leader anymore. In a follow-up tweet, Uno named himself the Unofficial Leader, and although Wyatt joining the group would be incredible, he'll never truly replace Brody Lee as the group's leader. 
Before his release, Wyatt hadn't been seen since the Raw after WrestleMania 37, and the biggest question now is why? Fightful Select reports that WWE had actually considered firing Wyatt in one of their previous rounds of cuts, presumably down to how much money his contract cost the company. PW Insider has reported that Bray's release was down to budget cuts, and Wyatt didn't ask to be released. John Laurinaitis, who was absent from TV this week as he's moving back to Connecticut, is the one who called Wyatt and told the former Universal Champion that he hadn't done anything to deserve being released. Releasing Wyatt over money is a strange decision as he's been a massive merchandise seller in recent years, with Fiend shirts and action figures earning WWE a ton of cash. One source pointed the finger of blame at WWE President Nick Khan and CFO Christina Salen, saying the pair are obsessed with WWE not being even one iota in the red on their financial reports. Wyatt's release came the same week as the company's 2021 second quarter financial report, where WWE once again showed how profitable they've been over the past three months. Other sources noted that Wyatt and Vince McMahon's relationship had been very hot and cold at times, and that McMahon has given Khan far more power to run things as he sees fit than any other previous WWE executive. That explains why WWE seemingly had no problem cutting such a popular superstar, as his contract was one of the highest in the company. Vince McMahon promoted Nick Khan to president so that he could take care of financials, and although he's taking that job very seriously, cutting as many big dollar contracts as he can, Khan is solely responsible for making AEW a bigger competitor in the process. Another source pointed out that a 90-day non-compete clause would expire the week before AEW's Full Gear pay-per-view, as WWE's chairman may have been very prophetic during this week's call with investors, where he joked about sending more names to AEW's roster. After plenty of reports and responses from others, Wyatt himself finally commented on this situation, taking to Instagram to issue a statement. In it, Bray repeated some of the harsh words fans had for him, saying he was stale, boring, and that WWE ruined him before speaking openly about his mental health. Calling his life in the ring art and saying his art and loved ones are the only escapes from his mental health issues, Wyatt said that fans have no idea how much a single thoughtless comment on social media can affect the person you're sending it to. The former superstar said that the negativity in the world today is astonishing and ended by saying that he loves JoJo, his kids, and his mom. On a special live Fightful episode on YouTube, Sean Ross Sapp went into greater detail about Bray's final months in the company, saying that he was told that Bray hadn't been all in on wrestling as of late. Sapp added that several people in WWE said that Wyatt hadn't spoken as much to others as of late, and despite being at a couple of TV events since his last appearance, he'd also missed a lot of dates. He added, When things were passed his way that he wasn't necessarily keen on, I don't want to say vocal, but he wasn't receptive to it from the people that I spoke to as well. Wyatt's WrestleMania match with Randy Orton was also discussed, as it was said that on the Friday before the show, Sapp was told by people in WWE that there was a great idea for the Orton Fiend match, and we can only assume plans changed between Friday and the underwhelming finish fans saw at the pay-per-view. Sean added that Wyatt was creatively frustrated in WWE, which may have been a factor in his release. This follows on from reports by Dave Meltzer, who noted that Wyatt had been gearing up for a return, being advertised for live events in August, but those plans clearly fizzled out. It had been reported that WWE had considered Wyatt versus WWE Champion Bobby Lashley, which would have started with The Fiend returning at SummerSlam to attack the winner of the Lashley-Goldberg match. Wyatt joined WWE in 2009 and underwent multiple gimmick transformations during his 12 years, but the next time we see Wyndham Rotunda, it'll be outside WWE's empire. Over to Impact now as former WWE superstar Aiden English has officially debuted for the company. Now known as Drama King Matt, English was Deanna Perrazzo's mystery partner at this week's homecoming event, and with reports that he's in line for a big push, the future looks bright for the former superstar. AEW now as Malachi Black appeared on this week's Dynamite, but he didn't make the journey to Charlotte, North Carolina alone. That's according to Cassidy Haynes, who revealed during Bodyslam.net's The Push podcast that Black's wife and WWE superstar Zelina Vega was backstage at this week's Dynamite. 
Obviously, AEW didn't show Vega on TV as she's a contracted WWE superstar, and we can only imagine the legal field day WWE would have if Vega appeared on TNT. Vega wasn't the only interesting name backstage as Ring of Honor slash New Japan's Brody King was hanging with friends during Dynamite, but there's no word of any talks between King and AEW. We doubt that Malachi Black will be appearing backstage at SmackDown anytime soon, but this week, AEW was happy to welcome a member of the other company into their arena. Now in 2017, Paige suffered a kick from behind by Sasha Banks that ultimately derailed her career, as the former Divas champion had to retire due to neck problems in early 2018. Since then, Paige has always remained hopeful that she'll wrestle again one day, and that day may be fast approaching. On Twitter, Paige stated that her neck was feeling awesome after she was able to squat 185 pounds, teasing a return to the ring. According to reports, WWE is all in on Paige wrestling again and is planning on having her return as soon as she's medically cleared, perhaps as part of the upcoming Queen of the Ring tournament. Though there was a time when it was believed that Paige would never wrestle again, the same used to be said of Daniel Bryan and Edge, and it appears that 2021 may finally be the year of Paige's return. And we're ending with Jinder Mahal, who's in the midst of a feud with Drew McIntyre, with a match at SummerSlam expected to happen. In 2017, WWE shocked fans by making Mahal the WWE Champion, a title he successfully retained against Randy Orton in a Punjabi prison match. Speaking to El Brunch de WWE, Mahal recalled that Battleground 2017 match, saying, Great Khali actually designed the match. He was supposed to be in the first one, he was actually in the second one ever, and then I was in the third one, and it's a very vicious, brutal match. The Punjabi prison is, hopefully I don't have to do it too many times in my career, because going into the Punjabi prison, you know you're not going to be the same person when you leave. That match takes everything out of you, and Great Khali is the creator of the match, and then when I was in the Punjabi prison, Great Khali surprised everyone and made his return. So yeah, hopefully, you know what, I wouldn't mind having Drew McIntyre in the Punjabi prison. So far, neither a match nor stipulation have been officially announced for the McIntyre vs. Mahal feud, but don't be too surprised if their inevitable collision happens in the unforgiving bamboo structure. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.